Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, I actually want to do something completely different. It's not about coins, but I want to show you some of the settings I use for my microphone because I I got into a conversation recently with someone about this um, and how they were saying you need to spend at least three hundred pound on a microphone to make it sound good. My point of view was yes, a three hundred pound microphone might sound good, but um, so will the fifty pound microphone if you have the right settings. So what I'm going to do here, these are some of the settings I'm using at the moment with this microphone. And I'm going to turn them off and we're going to just, we're going to show you what they sound like. And that's the plan anyway. So let's just jump straight into it. I'm going to turn them off and we're going to go from there. Be warned, all right? They do a lot of things. Okay, so they're all off. Um, I can't hear this back, but I can see the levels on this microphone. Um, and that, that <laughs> yeah, I can see them. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm going to turn it back on now. So start with the compressor. Uh, this is one of the things that, helps with the, the the top end and the low end it just helps with just things sounding ah, all over the place compressor is now on uh you might it might hear a, it clear up the background a little bit but there's a little you know that hum it, 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 we'll get to that but it's definitely um helped with just the wide range of sounds uh, moving on to the expander um, this is very similar to the compressor but again they do different things so one will be the top end, one will be the, the bottom end. Let's turn that on now. And now what this is going to do is anything that is without, well, not within the range that I want it to, to hear. That's what all these um, settings have done. I've already pre-adjusted them. Anything that's not in that range is going to be cut out. The other one um, I use here is the noise suppression. I use the, the standard RN noise. It's just really, really good. It is It does use more CPU usage. So... That's the only downside there, but you know what? If you've got a, like an i7 or something like something like that, you'll be okay. Background noise, go on. This really helps with like uh, computer fans or if you're like um, near a kitchen, if you're like a, you know, the fridge sounds or just tumble dry, anything repetitive in the background, uh, it tries to cut out as much as you can. Obviously when you're talking at the same time of making noise, it might get a little bit of that in. But if you're not talking, it tends to cut that kind of thing out. Uh, then we've got the gain. This is just a little thing to to do with the the sound levels again. It, it's not a massive difference. I don't think it makes uh, the world of difference, but we're going to put it on anyway because I think it makes a difference. One of the most recent plugins I've got is this Marvel GEQ. Um, but let's turn it on and see the difference it makes. Now it's on. The one I'm using here is just a preset from Session, uh, which is brighter and bassy. Uh, they all do different things, but what I find here, if you want like the, the bassier sound, you're going to need to turn up the bass here at the front, and then towards the end, you need to turn up that kind of like the higher end as well. If you want that kind of uh, like almost radio sound, if that makes sense. That's, that's, the, that's the closest I can explain it, is radio sound. But together, considering all of these are free um they're amazing uh, so i i definitely have recently discovered them and i'm just i've been live streaming for like at least two years now and i have discovered these settings in the past month with this uh marvel gq sometimes you have to set up the settings every time you load the uh, streamlabs obs um so combined everything here is doing something everything here is doing something i'm also going to turn on the limiter as well so now all the um, all the settings are on. I don't. I'm not turning on reverb. Reverb's for for uh, something else. Uh, but everything together combined with almost a cheap mic. This might cost me thirty. No, this this that was a package. This cost me fifteen pounds. The arm and everything and all the attachments cost about thirty. Um, and this this is just a, a standard like phantom powered mic, an XLR. And this plugs in. Don't touch the mic when you're recording. Uh, this plugs into a audio mixer that goes into the PC by USB. Um, and because of that, you know, most of the work can be done by the PC. The USB ones tend to plug in directly to the computer and they, they're done on board or they're again done by the PC. 
So there's some of the settings I use. One of the most important things I'd, I'd say with microphones especially is the closer you are to them, the better they're going to sound. Because if you don't have to turn them up as much and they don't have to work as hard to try and capture your voice. Um, so if I move away from the microphone or it moves away from me, you know, while you can't see the microphone, there, there is a difference. And like, you need, to, you need to ask yourself, what do you want? Do you want it to sound good? Um, do you want it to look good you need to decide this but you you'll see it yourself when you see most like streamers or when you see most videos they will have the microphone close to them because it just sounds better um the other thing that um, i would say is quite important again i'm touching the microphone i'm using it uh, don't touch the microphone when you hear it uh the other thing i would say is important is the direction of mic you, you know a lot mics do have a direction uh they they don't all pick up all, all sounds from everywhere so find out your polar pattern on your microphone that will tell you where the sound is going to be recorded so for example this one has a polar pattern of forward and the back behind here uh the back doesn't record as much sound so if there's noises over here behind the microphone it doesn't pick them up and what i'll do for an example i'll just turn it around as well there you go i've turned the mic away from me completely and what what this can do is if you're typing in front uh, on the back of the microphone it won't pick up that noise as much but let's turn the microphone back around again so now we're going to talk it right into the front of it and you see what i mean there is a massive difference here so one thing i would say with your microphone is just get it set up to to where you're going to use it so at the moment this is here but i i adjust this quite often so sometimes you might might see me pull it to the side here it depends on what i'm doing because if i'm doing like coins i need to get my hands and there's a camera above me here then I'm not going to have a microphone right right here. It just needs to be slightly off to the side. Um, and my arm for this is quite far away. So when I finish recording, I literally just throw it all back there and I've got the desk clear. I mean, ideally I'd like when them like them wrestling mics that come down from the sky, that'd be quite cool. But <laughs> I don't know if I, um, how, I don't even know what they're called or anything, but that'd be quite cool. So that's what I'd say. It's just mic positioning and closeness makes a difference to microphones. So I hope you enjoyed this very quick video on, on just this microphone setup, and I hope it's been useful for you. So until next time, I've been New Game Tag, and you've been awesome. Goodbye. And there you go. That's, that's what I use reverb for. Sometimes when it's late at night, I just think, I want to sing something, so I'll, I'll put reverb on and just sing.